Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. And all of you know, or a lot of you know, I've been driving the Porsche quite a lot recently. I'm trying to get used to it. I'm using a bit of RST as well. So I thought I'd just dive into, just to analyze a tuning session that I was doing the other night that you may have caught on stream. I'll put a link up above as well. Just what is going on with the Porsche. It's a very difficult car to drive or, or everyone thinks. Make sure you subscribe, give that thumbs up. Let's dive in and watch the lap. 70 litres of fuel, middling temperatures, I think it was sort of 24, 32, and it's just, you know, the time doesn't mean much, it's 159.7 if you really want to know, but it's all about the process, it's all about diving into just looking at the lap and, and seeing where we can get a little bit better. First thing I want to note is, is you know, we're, we're using low brake bias here, we use a lot of throttle to adjust the car throughout this lap, it's a style of mine that a lot of you have picked up on and, and we've had a lot of discussions about, there are a lot of pros and cons to it, it's quite an interesting one. A bit of understeer through there into uh, into that corner and we drop it down into second here, not using all of the brake, we'll dive into that later in the video, just off the throttle here a little bit just to get that turn in and then straighten that steering full power up the hill as we come into the Degnas. First Degner, really crucial, you click the kerb, don't go too far over it, otherwise it'll, it'll shunt you out wide. Looking for that dark patch of Astra on the left hand side, and then as soon as we're on the power there, get that steering straight, let the diff bring the back of the car around. Make sure we get straight here as well to brake in a straight line when you're on full power, trailing the brake off nicely into the hairpin. Again, steering back to neutral as soon as we can on full power, looking for the edge of the kerb to maximize that acceleration up towards Spoon because this is the third fastest part. The, the, the course okay coming to spawn a spoon really short braking zone just on that slip road on the right hand side throw it in see if you can get yourself a good line a little bit of understeer and oversteer as we correct the car on entry and then a bit of snap oversteer on the way out so a few things still left to be done on the setup but we're getting there it's relatively comfortable as we come into 130r it should be flat we have a little bit of a, a kind of confidence lift off we don't lift off completely just a half lift and then again straight steering make sure you're really straight out when you're under heavy braking we miss the apex slightly there so there's still some time there but a nice exit the car settles down over the bumps nicely coming out of the final chicane and away we go for that 159.7 so let's have a look at the first sector in isolation then. And the first thing, again, like we mentioned, really low brake bias here, 53%. In fact, I think after this lap, we experimented with even down at sort of 51.6 or so. So it's all about finding that balance. And if you just sort of slow it down slightly, you can see how much throttle input I'm putting in here to, to balance the car on there as soon as that steering is straight again or as soon as we're on full power up up uh, we're straightening our steering and then again here actually changing up as we turn in just to get that last final couple of miles an hour and then flicking it back down into third to get that turn in through the left hand just as it's quite a fast corner we're still got a little bit of work to do a little bit of understeer creeping through in that first section you see again just as i flick flick down into second gear here we're still on that sort of 60 percent braking we don't go any higher we'll really dive into the telemetry about that in a second but that little stack of oversteer there as we saw in the intro and then as soon as we're on full power here get that steering straight and we power up the hill so if we go across to rst then you think a lot of people look at this telemetry and go oh my gosh what am i looking at here but let's let's break it down really simply let's click just before the first corner and let's just zoom in to the first section okay so this is about the length of the, the clip that we just watched and the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to look at this as an overall sort of picture and pick out a couple of things that really, really stand out to me straight away. The first thing is you'll notice I, I never, if we look at the blue trace, never actually go to full braking. This is, you get your exact values up here, 89, just over 90% braking even into the first corner. This next braking zone is, is a very short one, 65-ish. And again, similar sort of 63, 65 ish levels. So that's interesting. So the first thing we know is we don't always need to be braking at 100% in this car. It's all about keeping momentum. And, and the, the, the least you can brake, uh, you know, you're going to keep a lot of speed in the corners. The second thing you notice is when we come off the throttle, when this, this main red line stops, we've got a lot of throttle adjustment couple of things could be played here this is 
First thing to note, this is my natural style. I like to balance the car on the throttle quite a bit to shift the weight around to induce some understeer or oversteer as needed. Uh, the, some of them are the change in gear blips, throttle blips that the game gives you automatically, but a lot of these are, are me sort of adjusting things. So let's look at the first corner specifically. So we just zoom in a little bit more to this one. You can see the blue line is our braking. We're constantly coming down brake as we, as we come through the corner. And, and we have this little period at the end where we're sort of 10%, a nice little trail off. This red line is really the key is we, we start to shift the balance of the car around in 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 and out of oversteer and understeer just because the Porsche we're running such low brake bars or such rearward brake bars you I feel like I need to do this the really key thing for me here though is this steering input here on this graph okay watch I'm I'm starting to I'm you know I'm barely steering I'm basically using the brake to steer around here in the throttle and as soon as I start to come off the brake more heavily look how as the blue line drops our steering input starts to gain and as soon as I come off that brake completely that's where I've got full steering input so this is the maximum that I steer through that first corner we start to apply the power and then as you see I get to the confidence to go to full power or almost full power that steering input dramatically decreases so there's a really really key relationship between getting on to a lot of power so this is 80 percent or 75 percent of power there and by the time i'm on 100 percent power my steering is not straight but it's much straighter much more neutral than it was a lot of people talk about turn one at Suzuka as um, a quite difficult turn to conquer. There's two ways of going around it, really. We've talked about this in the trail braking video before, but I just wanted to show you, because uh, I, I experimented with both ways in this portion. This one I found to be better for me, where I'm constantly on the brake and I'm just trying to adjust it. If we click on this second lap here, uh, I realize that this is a little bit complicated. Let's just go to the braking phase. So the, the red is what you've just seen. That's my, my, my initial lap. And then the green is a slightly slower lap. Not much time lost at all, don't be gone. But that's where I'm on the brake and I come off the brake a little bit more. It enables me to, to steer a little bit harder. And then I'm back on and then off again. Okay. So two different ways of going through that, that first corner. And, and actually, you know, it's, it's up to you what style you sort of take, but it's the same thing, okay? So you have this really stable on the green line, the throttle input here, and as soon as I'm confident I'm getting up to full power, I'm off that steering again, actually straighter earlier in this, this corner, which is which is interesting. Get a little bit more speed out of it. I don't take quite as tight a line. I think I run slightly wider here and then cut back earlier. It's absolutely fine. Two different ways of taking the first corner. Let's get rid of that lap. Let's go back to the first sector as we go through the rest of the lap then the uh, rest of the sector then you'll see that actually we come off that throttle very quickly we induce a lot of steering and then we have a little bit of a stab at the brake just to get that rotation in the Porsche and as soon as we feel we're confident and again we're off that steering as soon as we're up to some high power high acceleration levels and as soon as we're sort of full power we're, we're just doing the minimum amount of steering that we we need to do and it's extremely similar going into what is turn five now and then coming up the hill the left hander we're, we're, we don't hit the brakes at all it's purely the car's rotation to bringing us into this corner so we're keeping that momentum nice and clean on the steering we have a little bit of oversteer at the moment here as we get to full power just as we're, we, we get the back end out going around the right hander just before we flip left it's really interesting to look at the braking tracer here not full power really uh, not full braking really something to bear in mind as we look for the rest of the lap into the second sector then and really crucial that we hit this curb on the inside of deck no not too hard as it kind of force you out and you see i'm off the power uh, and off the brake completely here so with the car is as stable as it can be it's just that steering input which we aren't trying to be too jagged with looking for that little dark patch of of green astro on the left hand side is a braking point or the, or, or the dark markings need to be on the on the brakes nice and early there because it's crucial to get a good run through there if you take too much speed on the inside you just won't get the run out really straight braking into the hip and you see how we trail off there that's that sort of 10 15 percent as we've really scrubbed off the speed but as soon as we're on full lock then we come off that that braking it's really just to keep the weight on the front of the car so the front tires have that grip 
to turn. It's really, really crucial into slower corners like that that you start to get into the habit of doing. Brake at the start of the slip road. As soon as we start to turn, we bleed off that brake nicely, keeping a nice stable radius. And then as we get on the power, a little bit of oversteer, as I said, but we're away. So again, if we flick back into RST, if we just zoom into what is the, the second sector um, towards the end of Spoon, so this is Spoon up here, this is the first Degner here, you can see again we've got this theme where we're not using all of the brakes, we just want that little bit of rotation and just to scrub off a little bit of speed. You can see it's, it's similar in the other laps as well, we actually have a longer braking phase in, in, in this section into the hairpin in a straight line in, in, in our lap that we're going to look at which is interesting um, but for the purposes of this if we just concentrate on the, the degners just for a second you can see how comfortable that trail off is it's not a stab on the brake it's just a nice arc just a build in some rotation to the car see I have a I get on the throttle I get a little bit nervous we saw that as I thought I was going to run slightly wide and as soon as we get to that slightly darker green astro we're on the brakes we're off the throttle there's a small crossover as you see here as well and then with nice arc off as we're starting to up our steering input here the brake trails off it's not a proper trail brake as in you're starting to get a uh, keep five or ten percent on the brake as you're deep deep into the corner but as you come off that brake you're starting to increase your steering and again as soon as you feel like you're up into full power that steering comes off really quickly and you accelerate in a straight line did leave some room at the uh, at the end of this corner um, but that's fine into the hairpin then as soon as you, you can see we've got this straight line braking phase here and as soon as you start to turn you've got this phase where you can get away with it a little bit you're trailing off that brake really nicely and then we keep it here actually it's about 15 percent which is probably slightly too much to trail which should just keep that weight on the nose of the car but your max steering angle you're off off that brake off that power and then as soon as you're on hard power again look how that steering angle decreases back to neutral as soon as you, you get from there so from so I put the power down with and then bam we're, we're, we're at neutral sort of steering and, and full power and that's why you get such a good exit coming out of that hairpin full throttle obviously all the way to spoon and then again this is spoon's just such an interesting corner again almost full braking in fact probably should be full braking for this initial phase and again as soon as we start to uh, input our steering and we get up to a full steering lock then we're, we're off that brake a little bit of jab of power just to get us through that corner and into the second phase of spoon and then again little bit of an oversteering moment here as we get on the power a little bit of an oversteering moment here as we put the brake on so we don't we don't brake all the way we're up at sort of 68 69 percent here a little jab of throttle here just to stabilize the car slightly and all of this is me trying to just push the boundaries of the car maybe induce a little bit of understeer so we get a wider line into spoon so it's all about how you how you compensate for, for your line in the Porsche. It's a very twitchy car, it's a very on-edge car. The brake bias is very far back. So if you could handle that and if you find your way of adjusting it to, to enable you to set yourself up to fire out to use its acceleration coming out of the corners, then you've got to be absolutely fine. Get on the throttle, get a little bit of twitch of, of oversteer. So I, I just I just come off the throttle. You see, I don't I really adjust my steering until a little bit later. And then we've, we get a little bit of, of oversteer again which I do have to use the steering to adjust although I keep full power in, in, in that instance. So again, really interesting that we're not using our full braking capacity through a lot of this lap, even into Spoon here, because it's quite a short braking distance. You're on that slip road on the right-hand side and then you're immediately into turning. So any time that you start to, to move the wheel, really, you should, should think about what your left foot is is doing under braking so it's it's interesting to look at and if we if we sort of compare the the traces especially the braking traces between the two laps you can see there they're pretty similar in the way that they act apart from into the hairpin here where the lap that we had the red lap is you have this nice trail here whereas actually in the green lap we we we're almost at full break and we really should be there but we come off a lot earlier and then we find that we're carrying a little bit too much speed into the corner so instead of trailing off nicely and holding that brake at 15 20 percent while we're steering we're actually on a lot of lock here and when we've got too much brake we're at 50 percent brake so I, I imagine we, we sort of understeered a little bit into here you can you can sort of see that in the speed traces as well the green line where we've understeered that the apex our apex not the apex corner but our minimum speed is much later 
and slower in the corner so this was veed a little bit more As you can see we actually get back up to similar speeds here in fact a virtually identical speeds going down the, the straight even at whatever phase here 92.6 to 92.2 really even above 100 um, kilometers now but this sort of breaking with faster into the braking phase because obviously we've, we've come off here but this sort of phase in the corner here we, we're carrying sort of 10 miles an hour or so, so more so really interesting to to compare that the two laps and two breakings together really crucial elements we're coming into 130 are that we try and keep as flat as possible here a little bit of a safety net lift here and then we get over to the left hand side of the track make sure you're braking in a straight line really crucial that you're braking if you're on 100 percent brake you should be in a straight line as soon as you start to come off that brake then it's time to, to shift your your approach really nicely and um, getting the rotation through the middle of that chicane using a bit of the power as well on the way we are and start finish line So final time back into RST and looking at the telemetry and, and really we've only got a couple of couple of corners left. At this point of your lap you just wanted to keep the steering as straight as possible. We'll get as nice a run down this straight. You can see we're, we're up into sort of 247 kilometers an hour sort of max speed somewhere up there in the Porsche just before 130R. Really if we zoom in and if we just do zoom, zoom in on this side so we get the whole sort of last sector I get a little bit of a lift here down to 40% or so throttle up. Ideally, once the, the setup's absolutely nailed around here, then I'll be taking that flat. It's, it's definitely to be done. That just is a little bit of a confidence lift. It doesn't really lose you too much time, um, but that's absolutely fine. Again, we've talked about it. This heavy braking zone in a straight line. You can see how neutral the steering input is here. As we're braking all the time, we're on that 100% braking the blue line. As soon as we start to steer, then we're coming off that brake, and then we were really into a lot of steering lock, then we're, we're heavily off that brake. I don't really trail into here. I actually carry a bit too much speed you saw in the, in the clip. I was a little bit wide on this first section. That enables me just to jab the throttle a little bit to flick the steering to the other side so we get that immediate rotation so we can cut back nice and straight on the power hard and again once we're up to full power you can see how that steering line drops off through that acceleration phase as I, I pull the marker through okay really key and then away in across into the line so overall um, just a, a simple analysis of, of looking at the brake and, and throttle traces this is something that you can do with yourself you can compare your laps between each other see exactly where you, you lose time so you can see on this lap coming out of the hairpin here you know we lose a lot of time on that acceleration phase which is really interesting through the first section as well it sort of ebbs and flows as we, as we take slightly different lines use the brake at slightly different points so it's a really good sort of self coaching tool to look at this it's not the only thing you can do there's so much stuff that you can you can look at and it's just it's just super interesting to, to get get in, in get involved really you can look at how much coasting you do how many times you coast uh, you know what gear you're in etc so it's, it's there's a lot of things to get through but really this overview tab looking at that brake and, and throttle trace you know don't find these scary once you start breaking them down they become really quite simple and it's all about comparing the throttle and uh, throttle and brake trace to your steering percentage okay so keep that in mind because um, uh, this is such such a powerful tool Guys, I hope that gave you a bit of an overview of some of my analysis process. Just wanted to review what we did on the stream on Thursday evening. Um, this Porsche, I'm starting to get my head around it, starting to get my head around the driving style. So please do subscribe to the channel. There'll be setups with this. There'll be more analysis, more RST telemetry analysis. And I'm going to do a whole load of injuries coming up in this 911. So stick with it. See you on the next one. Bye, guys.